Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the fifth SODB podcast. This time in perhaps our natural home, Scotland, uh, we have five representatives of the varied Scottish Old Derby community to have a chat about Derby in Scotland and some of its high points and the exciting things we've got. I'll let my guests introduce themselves first. So. Hi, I'm Sarah McMillan from Glasgow Roller Derby. Hello, I'm Emka and I skate with Paul Dricky Roller Derby. Hi, I'm Becca and I, I'm with Inverness City Roller Derby. Hi, I'm Puds and I'm with Granite City Brawlers in Aberdeen. Hello, I'm Stormer and I'm with Lothian Roller Derby. It's good to have you all here. Um, now, uh, I think of all of the guests, the regions we've had on this podcast, Scotland actually has the longest running Roller Derby community because uh, um, Roller Derby dates back to 2007 in Scotland, uh, as far as I remember. Uh, so. Um, I guess we should start by having a talk about how how it started in Scotland and where we are now um, as contextualization. So, um, as far as I'm aware, uh, Glasgow was the second league to start up. Technically, I think Granite City had meetings and some training. Um, I think Glasgow was maybe the first. A league to get a team together of sorts and to, to maybe have some public games um, but uh, yeah Granite City definitely happened first and um, Glasgow Roller Girls as we were then um, started in March um, of oh, 2000, 2007 2007 yeah it, it was it was a year and a half before uh, um, I found out about it which I was distraught about at the time <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's only a year now. <laughs> it's all good. But um, yeah, what what came next then? Um, uh, I think then it was technically yeah. um, Old Ricky. Yeah. Yeah, Old Ricky was 2008. Um, like they met first time in 2008, like in a pub and skated in church halls. And, you know, there were a few people doing stuff, but became Old Ricky in 2008. We had 10 years in 2018. And I should note that technically, while Granite City Roller Derby did start in 2007, they were Aberdeen Aces at the time, and they rebranded within a year and sort of reconstructed reconstruct themselves. So there's kind of an argument of, as to who was really first, because Aberdeen and, and Glasgow and Edinburgh were all really quite close together in terms of starting out. So then I think for a long time, oh, we don't have a sense of Dundee here, but Dundee weren't that long after um, ARG, I think. It was only, only about another year, wasn't it? Um, Were they Dundee uh, Destroyers then, or was that? Yeah, there was Dundee Destroyers. And rather like Aberdeen, there was Dundee, Dundee Destroyers who then sort of disappeared and reappeared with some of the same members as yeah. Dundee Roller Girls, who then, of course, now are Dundee Roller Derby. And then there was an Inverness. Yeah, so there was a big there was a big peak then. So we we have two parts of the the big surge from twenty from twenty eleven, because Inverness started then and Lothian started then. So yeah, so Inverness started. Um, well, I was certainly aware of it in two thousand and eleven, as Wild Nest Roller Girls, and there's also mm -hmm. Nasty Nessies Roller Girls. Um, and then we rebranded to Inverness City in about 20, 2015. <clears throat> so yeah, so we missed the big influx of roller derby and then we kind of mm. hit the second one. Yeah, I believe Lothian, they were at the time Lothian Derby Dolls started in November 2011. Um, and then we rebranded as Lothian Roller Derby. Oh, was it? I can't remember if it was last year or the year before, in the last couple of years, anyway. Yeah, you, were, you were talking about it for longer than I think it had. Rebranding is hard, right? So. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's, it seems like ages ago, but I, I don't think it was that long ago. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, I mean, we are so representative of Men's World Derby as Puzz, but men's derby was started in a sort of weird way with a kind of mashup team called the jakey bites um and for a long time that was basically it but i think 
the brawlers were one of the first official men's men's yeah. teams. So we kind of, I think the Jakeys was 2011, 2012 mm-hmm. um, was when it started. And then as that kind of took off all the, so we had maybe one or two from each of the women's leagues all came together, formed the Jakeys. And then a year or so after that, everyone got sick of traveling. It was like, well, let's set up the, the teams in our own homes. And I think probably Brawlers, Capital City and Mean City were probably yeah. the ones that all formed at that point. And then Bairn started up kind of about the same time. Yeah, the Bairns were an offshoot of uh, of Fierce Valley, um, who yes. were one of the other leagues that founded in 2011. Um, uh, well, 20, late 2010, early 2011. And then there was a split off to form the Bairns. So yeah. there was a kind of, the men's derby surge was around about late 2012. Uh, um, through into 2013 is when people started thinking about it, I think. Yeah, yeah, 2013 was when we officially yeah. sort of started. So we've all been going for quite a long time. I mean, there were, there were, I think, I think that means that we've been going for longer than some, the, 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 I mean, we've been going as a region for longer than quite a lot of the rest of Europe because of the, we went, I mean, Glasgow and Aberdeen and Ard weren't that long after London. We have quite a we have a reasonable of history in um, in the in the um, in the country. Yeah, yeah. I think it was like, like London, Birmingham, yeah. um, Aberdeen, or Granite, and us. And the team Canada came over and yes, I think it, I, th- I think there's a story about that. Is is there not? Um... <laughs> They're all stories to me. So <laughs> fire away. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! So the story I hear is that um, we only that is that uh, Glasgow only managed to get Canada to come and travel because we lied to them about how close London was to um, London was to Scotland. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> I think there was also something about old Ricky yeah. almost kidnapping a team to come and play in Jack Lane, yes. which is our venue, which is the horrible yeah. venue ever. Oh, it was um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> So th- there's a lot of subterfuge in the in the past of old of Scott of old of, you know you've got you've got to get your games when you can when you're deciding out because yeah. at that point in time there weren't that many leagues in the, in Europe. No, no, there really weren't. Which was yeah, there was there was a lot of traveling. Yeah, there was definitely very few local games. So it's good though. It's great. It's, it's, it, you know, we had so many people, I'm sure you guys are all the same, that people who didn't have passports before and hadn't been outside, or outside Scotland um, and then got to go to Europe and the States and stuff like that as well because of roller derby, which is, you know, it, it has broadened horizons for sure in so many ways, which is great. And I mean, I mean, Scottish leagues have been found, have been involved in quite a lot of international tournaments now. Um, he says, carefully segueing into the fact we have footage from an international tournament. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I'm going to um, put up uh, the most recent uh, international tournament, WFDA international tournament that a Scottish league was involved in uh, was last year's Continental Cup because uh, um, Old Ricky qualified for the Continental Cup in Helsinki and played, ironically, um, the least European team first. Uh, they played Perth, a uh, world derby from Perth, Australia, not from Perth and Scotland. Um, uh, so um, I'm going to share this with everyone and start. Start, and then we can have a conversation while we watch it. So, so hopefully everyone can see that. Oh, great! Oh, yeah, it oh. looks good. Oh, this is so exciting! <laughs> so, yeah, so this is this is um, so. Unfortunately, Old Ricky did didn't win this game. But then again, Perth were a, a much higher seed than them, so that's a, that's fair enough. Um, and I think Perth finally came fourth in the entire Continental Cup, so it is it is not that bad a performance considering how well your opponent actually uh, turned out. Um, but Emka, were you were you in this game? Yeah, I was in this game. It's quite painful <laughs> to remember that. <laughs> I'm sorry for bringing back. Right like physically, uh, it took me quite a while to actually watch the footage after. But yeah, it was difficult because the only team that was not European, so it was really difficult to find any footage of them mm-hmm. play. 
um, and information, you know, like when you play around Europe, it's quite easy, especially now, just like to get full touch and, you know, to do some prep. And we just did not know what to expect apart from the fact that they are from Australia. So they probably are going to be strong, physically strong, mm -hmm. which they were. <laughs> yes. Uh, absolutely. And it was a tough game. It was a very slow game when you watch it. It looks like it was slow and kind of like not much is happening. Uh, you know, like there's no like flashy jumps and like action, but it was really tough. And it was, I think it was very well played, like uh, tactically from both sides. Mm -hmm. Most of the game there was about 30 points differential, um, which is not that much. So it was kind of hanging. We didn't feel like we were losing, like it was, you know, it was just within the reach all the time and we fought for that quite hard. Yeah, I mean, I think all of your games at the Continental Cup were actually well played by Ard. It's just that, you know, um, your opponents were extremely good opponents as well. Um, but there's no, um, there's no, there's no, I mean, again, I think actually the ranking for this Continental Cup was actually pretty close for all the teams, uh, apart from maybe the top two. So it was, a, it was a difficult tournament to play, I think. We were not expecting to uh, go to this tournament, really. To was the... some point of the season. Because mm -hmm. we didn't have that many, um, we didn't have, uh, it was a problem to get sanctioned games in a season. And we managed to get sanctioned games. Uh, we got good uh, points of this and then we got the offer to go to the car. And yeah, because I mean, it's been, it's been actually an interestingly varied experience for Scotland and WTA tournaments, because obviously the high point for Scotland was Glasgow actually making it all the way to WTA D1 playoffs? No, D, yeah, yeah, um, way back in, was that 2015? It was 2015. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we our focus for that year was to get to D2 playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, we we went we went there with a massive lack of self belief, <laughs> which I think crippled us, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, by the end of it, we realised that we probably did deserve to be there but it had taken the, the whole weekend of playing games for us to realize yeah. that so yeah it's oh, so much of it psychological mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> um but yeah that was that was pretty amazing but i think that like one one of the main like i was saying in the email um last week one, one of the main things for women's derby internationally and in, um from scotland was when aldrichy and um glasgow both went to ECDX for the first time we went to America and we both did so much better than uh, anyone had expected and really put Scotland on the map as well. Um, Ed Edinburgh and Glasgow. Yeah, I, I, there, was a, there, was a, there was a long running meeting with, yes. Uh. But yeah, there's always that. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, you're right, Sam, it's been, um, uh, I can't even remember what the question was. Sorry. Well, I was just I was just commenting that we've we've actually done we have we have had some very high highs actually for a, a small a nation with actually not that many um, people in it. Um, no, exactly. Yeah. I remember watching these playoffs uh, when Glasgow played in state, like in the middle of the night, because I was just I just kind of started roller derby then. Yeah. Plus, it was so exciting that last game when you were losing, and then it was like the win at the end, and it was just like yes. Yes. We won a one. game. Yes. We won <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that No, was it was great. It was like, that was my first first time when I actually watched uh, D1 playoffs as well, like ever. Cool. Oh. Yeah, I think it was the same for me. And especially like following GRD's like journey that year from the growth to that playoffs. It was, it's always quite good to sort of not just watch a one-off game, but actually see the work that's gone in to yeah. get there. It, it, uh, and it was immense and and there are always lessons to be learned from that as well i'm sure um everybody has <laughs> has has experienced that kind of moving towards high level tournament and then it 
having to manage your lives and your jobs and all of the other things and um yeah we, we, alongside that is is not always the easiest thing um mm. as well so uh yeah it's uh it, it was absolutely wonderful experience and that was around the same time as the world cup as well so we'd load yeah. when that happens at the same time and you have people like most of the team on international teams at the same time as well it's uh yeah it's it's a juggling act <laughs> i forget you, was were it you, what, what, were you were you team uh ireland i was team was ireland it? yeah yes. me and hazard um yes we're on team ireland yeah was it also not the same year as the first British Championship? It was, it was yes. Yeah. Which, yeah. which Glasgow also managed to win. Um, well, and that was what landed us, <laughs> yeah. you know, in D1 as well, because those games were UK RDA and WFTDA sanctioned. So it was the, the cluster of, of sanctioned games that meant that the results from that had given us the rankings boost that got us into the playoffs. But yeah, and, and there wasn't as much traveling with that, but there was still quite a lot. But uh, yeah, I think both Glasgow and um, Edinburgh had, uh, um, Audrey Gee had hosted. Yes. Weekend. We had this crazy like seven games in one day. That was a good yes. day. Wow. <laughs> I was no. officiating and people, well, I, I think I officiated and I sold like five games that day. Mm -hmm. And people were like, oh, you're not watching, like, I don't know. I think it was actually Glasgow or Ricky. I'm like, no, I just went out of the hall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was, it was also for me, like, you know, watching such a high level roller derby, which was Scottish uh, because we were the top ranked teams, uh, mm -hmm. Glasgow and ourselves. And that was my first, like, stint of um, sanctioned games officiating as well. So it was like a milestone for me on so many levels, this British chance and like the experience that I got from this. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and it's it, stressful for everybody involved with mm -hmm. games that are, that are that high level as well, I think. And I think there's been an argument that it's the two most stressful things to officiate are very high level games and very low level games, but for entirely opposite reasons. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I mean, uh, we shouldn't discount men's roller derby because obviously, uh, Grand City Brawlers have also hosted very high-level tournaments in the uh, in the last um, year as well. So, um. yeah, glad we're not doing that this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, hosting a tournament definitely comes with stresses, but uh, the team always seems to work together. And you know, we've worked with yourself, Sam, and it's very helpful to have the sort of footage that means everyone else can watch it around the world. Um, the first one we hosted, Silver City, uh, was our first sort of year in MRDA. And it's quite difficult to get ranked in your first year because you need mm. to play five games. And we saw ourselves and loads of other teams that weren't ranked. And we're like, you always get the, the big champs tournaments that's got the same teams at them, which are great to watch. But we're like, there's not a, really tournaments for the smaller ones. So we did a specific lower level MRDA teams tournament and it was really well and it got was really well received. And so they asked if we would host uh, <laughs> qualifiers and went, uh, okay, <laughs> that sounds fine. It was but more than fine. <laughs> you've, done, you've done the groundwork, you've done the hard parts already. So you're like, okay, let's do this again. Hmm. But yeah, people, I think, teams that haven't hosted tournaments, I think, don't realise just how much running around being horrified, being being stressed to it in the background of any tournament. Because Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely, there's stress of travelling to away tournaments because of all of that. But the hosting and all of the background stuff, and because it's a DIY sport and we all have a role to play that's not just turning up and skating, but yeah, you're right. It's totally stressful. I always say, just don't take anything I say before the track is down personally. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. the first tournament I ever officiated. It was the Silver City Cup in Aberdeen. And it was terrifying as a new NSO beforehand, being like, oh, this is sanctioned games. This is the big mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but I think because we were working with a lot of people that we'd worked with 
um, around Scotland that took the pressure off a lot and there was just this vibe in the hall um, and I think the brawl has definitely contributed to that of just like even though it was um, like high pressure kind of time you still had a lot of fun it was great to watch all the games it was great to watch all the teams and um, to learn with your crews as well it was just yeah it was brilliant absolutely brilliant good work um, fans. <laughs> I'm just the face <laughs> <laughs> Other the people that do the hard work. Shout out to Nikki and Lucy. Um, uh, just to follow on from that, actually, about the officiating, I think that's something we're very lucky to have in Scotland, is a very sort of close officials community, and that's what sort of allows these tournaments to happen. It is the same faces you see over and over, and it you get to know them, mm-hmm. and it's really good. Yeah, we have a very strong officiating community. I mean, we have... I mean, M- M- Emka hasn't mentioned that Emka, you do as, as much officiating as you do as you, you do yeah. competitive skating, I think. So, um, I mean, yeah, a lot of I, other... I, I think that it's, it's very kind of Scotland specific regarding the fact that, you know, there are still distances. We're talking about traveling and Scotland is not a small country. If I want to go to like Aberdeen or Inverness, that's more than just, you know, um, sometimes I feel I think about it like you know like people in states they need the officials are saying about like oh I have this limit three hour journey to go and do a game as an official and to me it's like three hour journey to go to Aberdeen mm-hmm. you know so it still it still involves quite a lot of moving around here uh, even though the central belt is I think the most have the most density with um, probably that will be happening. But there are all these other strong points and the officiating community like officials are quite together still as the Scottish officials and I think there has been a quite strong presence in like Europe and the world from the Scottish officials as well. Yeah especially Dundee um, their officials are just worldwide and they're amazing I love their officials. (laughs) Yes unfortunately we didn't get a Dundee rep because if we did then I would have to grab a Dundee official, is it? Um, so as you say that, um, Shugs is currently uh, jam refing the game that we're watching. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, that's true. Yes, he did. He did jam ref this game. Distracted by the yes. fish. <laughs> oh my like, yes. oh, god! <laughs> I mean, Tem was uh, Tem uh, was a head ref for this game as well. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. This was a. This was a. Well, I, again, as as you've mentioned, I mean, we always for any European high level tournament especially and some of the US ones have a very high representation of our officials turning up to do these things. So yeah. there's a credit to us. Uh, but talking about uh, the difficulty of traveling to places, I mean Becca, I mean Inverness, um, I'm trying to remember your Inverness's schedule because you've you've hosted a bunch you hosted uh granite city i think or was it the other way around um granite the fight hawks um hosted us yes and then we've hosted newtown um and we've also hosted oh, i forget we've only had a couple of games but it's because yeah. it's so long ago i've forgotten um but we had a few um like challenge teams events as well so that's been really fun. Um, but being up in Inverness, our closest neighbours would be Helgen Roller Derby that's 45 minutes away. And then from there it would be um, Granite City, which is about two and a half to three hours, or Perth, which is about two hours, two and a half. Depends if you get stuck yeah. on you know. But yeah, yeah um, we really appreciate when people do come up that they have, oh, Orkney by Queens, that's who we played. Um, of course it was, yeah. So they would have had to come, they had to come from the island of Orkney to Aberdeen and then come across to us. So um, geographically, we are in a strange little spot mm. um, that always takes at least two hours to get to it. So we really appreciate when people make make the effort to come up because we know it is a hard drive. Um, but yeah. We could we, also <laughs> probably organise like double days of stuff if you guys wanted to come Mm -hmm. down this way as well like Glasgow on Saturday at a run Sunday or whatever as well so I'm interleague here at Glasgow so oh excellent yeah definitely I will definitely pick you up on that um this past year we've been rebuilding because it's just with the usual you know derby peaks and troughs of memberships and things so 
um, we were rebuilding again last year and then this year we were hoping to have our first game in a while but obviously <laughs> the world had different plans yeah. but I think it's always the same because we're the same it's like we were supposed to have a game last weekend and it's the first, I mean, I've been playing for four or maybe four years and not only did we have enough players to field 15 and have reserves we had competition for our reserve spots and that's never happened it's like mm -hmm. finally we've got enough uh, with the eligible players to yeah organize games and play games and it was going to be so exciting <laughs> who knows what will happen once the lockdown is over and our our numbers just change constantly all the time um do you find it students or do you find uh, like where where does everybody get their pool of skaters from? Is it? We're quite varied. We've got probably more students coming in now, but lots of um, mums, uh, people that work shifts. We seem to have lots of NHS workers in them, which is all great and it's fine. And it's and it's not always that we don't have enough players. It's just sometimes finding a day that we can get enough of our people to play. Um, yeah. People that have a, a day job or something to do during the day, that means that they could really do with hitting people at night time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. I was going to say the more competitive um, your league becomes, the, you know, the more uh, time you have to put into this. Yeah. Um, never mind, you know, um, the level you're at. It's always going to be more practice and more commitment needed towards the uh, league stuff because we all run the leagues ourselves so obviously there's a lot of things apart from skating as Sarah said like you know never mind putting the tournament but making sure that there's money in the league and then we we can put any games and we can actually have uniforms and you know do anything really yeah. um so so there's like your second you know we always say it's like a second full-time job isn't it mm -hmm. And then on top of that, if you are one of the very high, high level teams, you're anomalously likely to have skaters that are also on your national team. So they're, just, they're going to end up having national team practices as well, mm -hmm. which has never been a problem for, 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 or for um, as we mentioned, for Glasgow and, and Ard, but also for Granite City. I mean, for, um, for, I know for the, um, the Power of Scotland practices, um, most of those were in central Scotland, and so Puds and a bunch of people were travelling down every week, every practice weekend from Aberdeen down to, you know, the centre of Scotland. Yeah. Some people had to fly. <laughs> and then that becomes another thing of like, you don't, you don't mind getting hotels when you're away playing, but when you're down for a training weekend, you're like, oh, I've got to try and find accommodation for this, and it just all adds up, but we do it because we love it. Yeah, but it's expensive as well. Um, well sorry. sorry, Pods, go ahead. No, no, on you go. No, I was just saying, I was just backing you up by saying, but it's it not just time consuming, but it's expensive when you've got yeah. all of the things to do as well. And then there's an extra team to be fundraising for as well as your own team. <laughs> and you're hitting up the same resources every time as well, huh? And, yeah. And, and then the bigger roller derby gets in Scotland the same people are being asked by all of us a lot of the time for support and that's um, a wonderful thing because it's great that Roller Derby's getting bigger and more people are getting to know about it but also it, it can be challenging as well because it's still unfortunately a niche sport despite all of us knowing that it is the best sport <laughs> <laughs> not that we're biased in any way but it's <laughs> I just love the, the the shock on people's face when you say that you do roller derby or you're a part of roller derby and then they watch um like a clip and like oh my god yeah and, you know really violent <laughs> no no it's actually it's totally fine don't worry <laughs> but do you get that as well sorry do you get that kind of I, I wonder if people go oh, but women, you know, I, I wonder, is it just a, a people thinking, well, women, but it's very violent. Do, do you get the shock that you're doing a, an aggressive sport? 
I probably don't get it from that angle, but uh, my day job is an accountant, so I right. get it from that. Like, <laughs> a, it's a very like shift in what people perceive of yeah. like my day job to like what I do at nights. Right. Um, but yeah, that uh, probably is quite a difficult thing to sort of get past people's mindsets on. Um, but it's definitely something my granny's asked. <laughs> I think well, because, because, because um, she's interested in playing or because um... oh no she loves it she genuinely comes to every single one of our games and um, always goes Actually, yeah, <laughs> that's like a typical granny noise isn't it Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's quite like when you're talking about the niche sport because when I, I actually I came to Scotland in 2007, so just when it was starting, and it took me a few years. I found out about roller derby quite early, but it took me some time to join. So when I joined, it was already after that second wave, so it was kind of established once you were there. Um, but then, obviously, because I'm Polish, I kind of went through the thing when Polish roller derby started as well. So it was this kind of like super new in Poland. So I went through this first wave of roller derby back in Poland with some of my friends. So it's quite, it was quite interesting experience as well, like seeing all these people being like, oh my goodness, what is it? Roller, ro roller, what? Roller blades? You know, I was like, oh, come on, we so past it in Scotland, like, <laughs> and it was, it was going, it was going exactly the same route in Poland. But I'm sure you'll be talking about it with the Polish roller derby in some point, Sam. Yeah, we know we we have we have that broadcast yeah. in development. But yeah. I'm not gonna um, go into this at all. No, um, <laughs> but no, it, it but it is a universal. I mean, everyone yeah. we've talked to it always says that there's the and I think you're right, Sarah. I think it's partly a gendered thing. Um, I remember an interview with, um, with I can't remember why Ulrich was being. Oh, it might have been Ulrich who might have been interviewed for the World First World Cup, and there was a there was a I think it was a women's hour interview. And they this horrified, oh, but you know, but it's violent and hitting people. And Crazy Legs came out with my favorite description of World Derby, which is what well, is consensual violence? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think it's, because um, Lothian are open to all, I get that quite a lot. And it's like, but men are hitting you, and it's like, but honestly, when you're on track, <laughs> there are <laughs> tiny little women who can hit just as hard and I'm probably more terrified <laughs> on track uh, so that can be tough for people to get their head around as well and I think so when I joined Lothian I joined just around about the time of the first Fear and Lothian game which um, at that point was Lothian Derby Dolls and Capital City Rollers it wasn't like Fear and Lothian weren't part of Lothian mm -hmm. Derby exclusively um, and I'd gone along and done new skaters and this was great and then it was only when I started to go to main practice and there was all these men there and I was like oh no what's going on I didn't know that this was a thing uh, but then yeah once you got into training and you just sort of get used to it on track <laughs> you really don't pay much attention to who's hitting you or I think when you're, um, particularly when you're open to all league, when you have the physical aspect of training or of playing games, um, it doesn't matter who you're on track with, it still feels empowering to take hits or to give out the hits and that kind of technical aspect of the game. It's just, I think that's what attracted me to it was that these people just seemed so confident and yeah, they would get knocked down, but they'd get back up again and they'd help up the teammates or someone on the opposite team that they'd just knocked over at the end of the jam. They would be pulling each other up and like high-fiving and it was just this really unusual atmosphere that I'd not seen anywhere before. No. Yeah, it's, it's got a respect that I've not seen in other sports, not saying that it's not there, but it's just, uh, I would, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it has it has a level of respect the amount of times that we've been playing against other teams and I've been like oh but <laughs> oh, that was pretty impressive <laughs> <laughs> all these other people's apex jumps <laughs> it's really weird going to another sport like um 
going to the hockey team here and hearing them introduce the other team and they boo them and you're just like, mm. oh, forget that they do that at other yeah. sports. Yeah. I was given detention for booing another hockey team at school. <laughs> I just joined in. I hated mm. myself for it. Mm. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yeah. No, really. But you're, you're right. I mean, it is weird because we've... I remember there's a very small number of games where I've seen one or two people trying to take them with booing and they're almost always, almost always a game with a very wide attendance and the people who don't know roller derby. Mm. So, um, yeah. Which I think... Um, I think I mean, it, isn't, it still isn't very frequent, but I have, but the only times I've seen it, seen any, and it was never most of the crowd. It was always one or two people, but it's always been really wide attendance games where they've been possibly the trade-off, right, of getting really wide attendance is you get people whose um, whose cultural perspectives are not the role of the cultural perspective. I don't know. No. That's yeah. We've had a couple of games. My first ever away game. Um, there were people in the crowd who were nasty really nasty and shouting really mean stuff at our skaters um and that was pretty awful and then one of our international games one of the one of the team's supporters were calling it off pretending to whistle doing you know just really manipulating um which was which was pretty awful but again that's in the same way that a team isn't the one person that's speaking on behalf of them. A team also isn't their their crowd or their fan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would like to out. like put the other uh, like go one eighty and just talk about how Scottish supporters travel with teams as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because this is quite amazing. And uh, wherever we go, we have a crowd of our own, and they are always the loudest. I know we have who's <laughs> on the crowd and who's just is super loud, but there are other people and they always with us and it just gives you so much Yeah. Uh, when you're on the track. Um, and yeah, and it's, I, I, I'm not sure like, you know, if many teams have it, like, uh, because it's not just going around Scotland, it's going internationally. If we play somewhere outside, we still have people going with us and like shouting for us and cheering for us all the time. Absolutely. And and even on social media, if they can't physically be there, like yeah. there would be times that we would come home at nights from like games at tournaments, and there'd be a huge long Facebook thread where everybody's like, just somebody. And you just look for this like one thing with your name, and you'll be like, yes, someone noticed me. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I need an ego boost, please. Yeah. But yeah, no, it, it's one. No. Yeah, but um, having having that is it's. Absolutely huge, yeah. And I mean, do you think it's a do you think it's a, a not only a uniquely Scottish thing, but do you think it's a part, partly a Scottish cultural thing? Because we do tend to be, I mean, I say we, well, of course, I moved to Scotland, but uh, Scotland tends to be very, um, you know, tends to have a very supportive um, atmosphere about 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 its teams and people who are members of Scotland in general. So, do you think it's a Scottish thing? Partly. I'm not sure. I, I think know. it's a roller derby thing and a mm. Scottish thing a little bit. Um, I'm not native, obviously. Um, mm. uh, but yeah, there's a Scottish thing like in, you know, watching like other sports and uh, Scottish supporters are quite crazy. But I think it's the roller derby thing, the togetherness that Sarah was talking about, um, the things that we do things together, like we, in the sport, we not only just, you know, um, going to play the sport together. We still do other things together um, behind, like we put the tournaments, we, we run the leagues and, and we this way are close to each other and, and that support goes through this like following. And yeah, I think it is the two things together play, play a big role. Mm. Yeah. I know, and I think it is quite interesting that, and it's always interesting to talk to regions about this because I think it depends on the region, but in Scotland, in general, uh, different leagues get on very well with each other. In general, and you know, we, there's a bunch of of I'm going to say fun, but all the old we should be fun. But in non 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 competitive, you know, um, all day events, things like 
I'm going to name check CrossFest, but other, but other events where which have mashup teams, which always have basically most of the leagues in Scotland involved in them. So, um, it's a testament think, to the game as well because we just, um, I don't know, we just want to have fun. Like, it's a game we do this outside of our like day jobs as adults and things. And, um, if it wasn't fun, we wouldn't really want to do it. But I think there is something about the Scottish community that is very warm and welcoming and you know yeah I don't know what else I had to add there <laughs> I mean, like so... share it with people who get it you know we we we, sh- we share it with our league mates all the time but when there are open um, events and um, places for other people to turn up and it is just it's nice to know that we all are in love with this awesome sport and we get to play together and you know even things like the fifth blocker party which um shona runs every year as well it's just that was a really nice thing to be at this year or well last year um as well because it's pick up games it's a bit of everything a bit of juniors as well and it was just a, yeah it was a nice thing to have i think yeah i think we haven't really mentioned that thinking about it's actually junior derby in scotland because we didn't haven't got any reps of the junior leagues in Scotland either, but that was a because um, I think um, Glasgow once weekly considered trying to do a juniors and oh, oh, we did yes oh, we we had <laughs> yes <laughs> I was there for that one um, <laughs> that that was um, yeah pretty awful to be honest it it was great because we got maybe sixteen. Um, young women, girls, young women, um, to show up. Um, it was a school hall um, on the south side. Um, but the janitor, even though it had been cleared through all of the right places, the janitor basically made us stop about halfway through the session and sent all of the young people out onto the street, basically, to wait to be picked up for another hour. And it just, it was, it was the oddest and yeah and and then it was just stopped from there so mm-hmm. we 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 kind of l- lost momentum because it was just such a shock and um having said that one one of those then teenagers is now one of our skaters so <laughs> she stayed involved yeah. but um yeah not not as many as we would have liked because i think you know from early on we realized that having a juniors league is a, a wonderful way of just bringing people through and supporting especially for teenage girls as well um because there's always been i worked in physical activity um as well and we've all there's always issues with trying to engage teenage girls um um in physical activity as well and for me it was always a no-brainer that roller derby would be a great option but it just yeah Anyway, means that we're doing a really good program, so that's it, it's resourced for them anyway here. So. Yeah, it was I think only... that. Yeah, sorry, Sam. I think the problem with juniors is that um, one of the biggest struggles we have, and I think all, most of roller derby teams, is the access to halls that we can train in, and and having enough space for yet another practice, and you know having people being able to run the juniors that's a big problem because obviously not every single person can do that um and we are so diy we don't have professional coaches you know um we are not professionals we are diy people may do like have coaching qualifications and stuff Mm. but having juniors involves you know so many more like safety checks and, and additional stuff and as you say from your experience as well that could be a problem um yeah it's just it's just really difficult when you when you think about it when you think about setting it up as a part of a DIY sport like mm-hmm. another additional part to your main league to have the juniors I think it takes a lot of uh, resources to be able yes, to have so. it mm-hmm. and we lack the resources mostly. Yeah. No, exactly, and I think Main City is mostly run out of the local roller skating rink here, yeah. which covers a lot of that. It means they have access access to um, equipment as well as a rink and all of their insurance and structures and things like that yeah. as well so it's the same in Edinburgh 
Right, okay. Oh, cool. There's yeah. one junior team uh, that is run at the roller rink, um, mm -hmm. and there's another one, so it's kind of two. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a complicated time. thing, and I mean, I, I, I technically the Mean City Juniors are technically sort of Mean City in that uh, they're officially roller stop, but yes, they're very closely associated with Mean City. Yeah. Right. Okay. And again, for the same reason that they're based in this, they're based in the roller rink. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's been quite interesting how Junior Derby has developed in Scotland because, of course, we used to have an actual official Junior League, who then unfortunately. Um, had um, you know went away a few years ago, and then, but it's surprisingly that seems to have resulted in a lot more junior the leagues popping up elsewhere. So maybe it was a good thing and overall, um, because I'm not sure what's happening with GRDA, the GRDA World Cup, um, but um, we do actually have a couple of Scottish junior skaters on the on the on the junior. The British junior uh, yeah. national team as well. So, yeah. yeah, but I'm not sure what's happening with that now. That everything is being cancelled, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When was it supposed to be? Uh, the things I didn't prep for the beginning. Um, it was later on this. <laughs> it, was, it was it was later on this year. So it, yeah. it there has not been an. I don't think there's been an announcement about it yet oh. because it's late on enough that yeah. they don't have to make an announcement. But mm -hmm. obviously, everyone's training will have been. Yeah, would have been mm. messed up. So, and I know that's one of the problems for, especially if you're high-level teams. If you're if you're Glasgow or Edinburgh, one of your problems is you can't train right now. So, competitive structure is all messed up. Yeah, yeah. We were supposed to have a tournament next month. Um, we were supposed to be hosting Chaos in the Clyde Three, and then going to Barcelona for a tournament that weekend. Um, which are the sorry the week the following weekend. So neither of those things are happening um we're waiting to see when rescheduling will happen if it will this year um and yeah yeah that's a hard one i <laughs> took a bit of chalk i was i brought my eight-year-old out roller skating the other day onto the street and we we drew a roller derby track and <laughs> <chalk>. <laughs> um, I, um yeah I, she wouldn't allow me to knock her over though <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's no fun. I know, right? <laughs> um, but yes, I'm sure, Amka, it's really affecting you guys as well because you, you'll be wanting to maintain rankings and stuff as well, right? I mean, you know, it uh, happens to all of the teams around the world, so it doesn't really affect yeah. us more than anyone else. But we were going to Madrid back in March and that obviously did not happen because it was just uh, after the outbreak when Spain actually closed the border. It was a few days after, so that didn't happen. We also were to host the tournament at the beginning of May. Yeah. Um, and our reserves uh, obviously play British champs, so they lost the season as well. Cool. So yeah, it's it's a biggie. Um, but I think it's like it it affects all of us the way that we just cannot skate together. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the main problem. Um, you know, we try to keep the league together as much as we can. We do quite a lot of like activities and things for people, if people want to join uh, yeah. things over Zoom and stuff, which I'm sure all the leagues are doing as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. There were some plans <laughs> that are gone. Yeah, I miss the high but fives. Difficulty is not known when it's going to be. Yeah. We don't know when the end is in sight, so I think that makes it quite hard to get your head around. Um, but yeah, like you said, we're all in the same situation. Back in a second. <laughs> Deliberate. But also, yeah, I mean, so speaking of Lothian, I mean, as you, as you said earlier on, I mean, you had your big fixture effectively vanished because that would have been what, last weekend. So yeah. is there a. Um, I don't know, there we are. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, so your big, your big fixture would have been last weekend. Um, yes. So, how, how are you keeping spirits up in Lothian? Because that was your, that was your, your get, your big game. Yeah, I know. And, and, and things were just like, ramping up. Training was just really ramping up when it finished, uh, when lockdown kind of uh, uh, became a thing. Uh, 
so yeah, it, it has been a bit of a bummer to be honest. But we still so Wednesday and Friday evenings are our training nights, and we we still stick to doing something. We've been doing lots of um, footage viewing and reviewing that. Um, some of our own games, some of more like international high level ones, which have been good to watch, and just a mixture. Um, and I mean, it's been it's been pretty uh, flexible. We've done quizzes pub quizzes uh together uh, just to try and yeah keep together i keep forgetting what day it is and not having a clue <laughs> what's going on but um yeah we are trying um and i think we're going to look at doing some fitness stuff together as well just uh, i'm sure some people are doing fitness stuff uh, um yeah but trying to make that more of a team thing as well mm. We did, uh, so I did, we run ref school, Ali runs ref school twice a year and I was doing the last block of that and that, uh, the second half of that we finished online, which was not quite the same because you, usually how we do it is uh, we'll do ref school and then we'll go and ref while the uh, skaters scrim. So we were um, not able to have the practical element of that but we were still able to do the sessions on zoom uh, but that's finished now as well mm -hmm. but i don't think it must be different thinking about just the number of fixtures that essentially Lothian have because obviously because you were you are you weren't planning on being a british champs i think no uh, no not so no. and what, what possible so the we first before. game was the only one that we had yeah. planned. We had a few other that were kind of in the pipeline, and mm -hmm. um, but obviously all that's on hold. Um, mm. But do you mind? So I, I, I guess what I was getting at is also: Do you feel that it's slightly different if you have a sort of less a less busy schedule? Because obviously, well, Glasgow and well, odd. There's a whole bunch of things riding on games. A lot of games when they're sanctioned. Whereas for Lothian, what's your what's your well, what's, no, what's we'll Lothian's... Like it, it's it's better when you have games. It keeps people motivated and it gives yeah. people something to work towards. Uh, we've we've had long periods where we haven't had games and we still manage. And everybody still loves the game and we love to go and watch other teams and appreciate other games and support and all these things. But it's it's definitely better when you have games to look forward to and and it's good for newer skaters I think to see their own team playing. I know when I um started I went through to Ayrshire, the dolls played played Ayrshire and I had uh finished new skaters and it was just amazing. I just couldn't like watching that game, I was like, oh, I I can't believe that someday I might be able to play and so yeah we, we want to have have games mm -hmm. well my point is they also feel different right because you're having games to have games as opposed to having games for example to part, to have games but also to gain ranking um so they must feel different um, i don't know i mean for, so okay so so people who do play games with ranking so pods or or Sarah or Emka, does it feel different playing a game that's not a sanctioned game to a sanctioned game? Um, I mean, I always play every game as if it's the most competitive thing in the world, so <laughs> I'm probably the wrong person to ask. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think there's definitely um, a bit more pressure on a sanctioned game. You're always playing, like, every point matters. Um, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I think so too. I think um, in a different way, um, it's I don't know. They're they're both. Uh, yeah, I'm the same as you, Pods. I I, I want to win at everything. I can't even do yoga in a class of people. If I <laughs> I'll be competing with my bands as the other people are. It's it's not okay. But um, yeah, the um, I think the sanctioned games, especially ones, work. I like to know the ratios and what we need to get to where my goals or the team's goals are. And um, there's people on the team who don't like to know that because that puts too much pressure on them as well. But um, as somebody who does like to know, I am then 
hyper aware throughout the game of exactly um what's happening and what needs to happen um so i'm yeah probably a wee bit of a stress bunny on the on the bench in those ones um more so than i would be at a non-sanctioned game which we will definitely use as a learning um opportunity um so yeah they're just different goals i guess for different things as well what about you guys amka well i think like i'm same like you always play you always play your best you never want to play like less than you can doesn't matter is it sanctioned or not but as a team um the atmosphere is different when you play sanctioned games it is it's always tension because you play for you know we always play for a win but you play for this point that you mentioned as well it's like unfortunately the way that you know the rankings work it's the points it's the uh lots of factors that fit into this so sometimes you know how much you need to to get what you want and stuff like this but um yeah i think the game is a game but also you know in a sanctioned game you play your plays and in non-sanctioned games you have more freedom to play something outside of the core stuff that you practice yeah, yeah. this is the time that you can spend on like uh, maybe uh, widening your rotation or changing your rotation or swapping the packs and things like that whilst when you go into sanction games you usually just go with the core packs and core drummers that's what i would say yeah what's 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 more stressful officiating a game or, or playing in it what's what officiating versus playing stressful well oh you know or or fun or both or I mean, there must That's be different. different experiences, yeah? Everything's different. If you're a person that just has to do everything, then, you know, you need to experience uh, the sport from all the possible perspectives, yeah? It's kind of what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, just love, I just love different aspects of it. And uh, I actually feel less stressed uh, doing officiating because it's more controlled in some ways than playing you you can control the play but there's more uncontrollable bits to this than when you ref or if when if when you nso you know you when you nso you always have some piece of kit <laughs> with you some help some friend around i mean like when you play you also have your team but yeah it, it's completely different and it gives great perspective to stand or skate on the other side of the track and have this eyes on different bits of the track from different parts of the track as well it all fits into the other position kind of experience quite well so i would advise everybody just to do anything and everything always yeah i found it quite eye-opening when i did ref school um just before the lockdown i didn't quite realize how much of a team the referees were i kind of just didn't realize how lovely it was to be a referee i don't know i don't know what i expected um but it was it was amazing i yeah was uh disappointed that that came to an end i enjoy refing i do it very very rarely and generally only jam refing because you usually only have to look at one person at a time <laughs> yeah. but that, i do enjoy it because it yeah you did a wee, it's a nice wweet team and you yeah. get to go Haters, what are they like? Yeah, <laughs> not that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I do similarly for NSO, and I think Becca, you've NSO'd a bunch of games as well as um, so Team NSO. Um, I think I'm up to well, I've definitely passed thirty games, um, well. and that's in the past two years or so. Um, but yeah, I've pretty much tried, it was a challenge to myself, first of all, to just get a bit more involved in Derby while I was trying to um, do my moments. And then I just genuinely love it. Like, I, I don't know what it is about it, but um, you get to see an entirely different side of the game, like Emka was saying, it's, it's a more controlled aspect. Um, but I think that taught me a lot more about roller derby than skating did um because you get to see all of the different scenarios play out right in front of you pretty much every week so 
yeah, I think even when I do eventually pass my men's in like 50 years or something, <laughs> um, I think NSO is always something that I'm going to do because it is just completely different and you do get to hang out with your team and the people that you see quite a lot um, and it makes you feel a bit more involved in the community, especially when you're not able to play games regularly. Um, it helps you, it gets you out of your own little league bubble to see what's what's happening. Yeah. We've started to make much more of an effort to get our new skaters involved in NSOing. So now any time we have a, a scrim or, or anything uh, when new skaters is on, we kind of make that part of the new skater program. So it's timetabled that they're invited to come along to those sessions to learn to NSO. Because I never, the only time I've NSO'd was um, the Inverness Newtown game actually I was playing there was a challenge game that same day and it was amazing I just I think I was like penalty box tracker and I was like ah oh, this is amazing mm -hmm. um yeah it's really something everybody should should try to do I think, I think yeah also we also yeah we also have like a part of our um you know, when you learn to skate and all, we, we have kind of stages and one of the stages is uh, officiating. So obviously, you know, um, comes through NSOing, but we also do some ref basics in it. And we have, we host, well, we have open screams uh, once a month, I think it is, when we are skating. So uh, the people uh, that are part of this group that is doing the, the and the sewing learning uh, rules and stuff they come and practice with us and we also always open on our Sunday screams for any officials that would like to come uh, you can just you know get in touch with us and come and then basically have some experience <laughs> during the screams there's like three hours of different level scrimmage that you can come and do stuff which I think it's something that other leagues kind of do as well mm -hmm. yeah I mean so Dundee again have they have a bunch of officials things but then again they have the most officials in scotland so they well they do the learning screams as well yeah. on friday every yeah. month also for and either skaters officials yeah yeah so yeah because they have that they have these and uh, these officials hang and chat which are more relaxed come and chat about a particular topic in a pub things and then i know that as you were saying old wiki have their thing but also in edinburgh there were the uh, officiating. We had ref school. I went to this. Max, yes. Max ran ref school one, one yes. year. Yeah, that was quite great. I just found like a picture today that uh, we were asked to do of your favorite animal with the legal uh, zones. <laughs> I just found mine today in one of my cookbooks. It's quite cool. <laughs> <laughs> what were you cooking? What was I cooking? Oh, I was doing pierogi, of course, because you know. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, as you do on sunny sunny Saturday when you have to stay in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I think that any any of this stuff and uh, what Stormer was saying about Ali, uh, I think it's kind of offshoot of this as well. Ali doing the ref school um, because we we don't have a, like a proper formal one, um, but people can join the uh, Lodians. It's open, isn't it, Stormer? Uh, uh, no, it hasn't been. Um, not okay. Always had so many of our own skaters that want to do it <laughs> so uh, I think if it gets to the point where um, there isn't anyone uh, wanting to do because it, it's capped to uh, <coughs> three or four people and there, there's been like waiting list almost um, okay to get on to it um, yeah there's there's like a cut uh, Mm, she was doing the NSO uh, meetings for mm -hmm. some time, like last year, and, and all of the materials are available. Um, I think it's free resource. And I went to one because it wasn't like training day or something, um, but it was quite good because Scott went through all the NSOing positions and not only what you do being in a position, but also other stuff that fits into it. So, it, you know, having a person uh, like Kat who is very experienced NSO. Mm -hmm. um independent running something for scotland because it was open for all the scotland was quite good shame that it was in edinburgh because not many people this way can obviously come and join but i think there was some plans to run something online from candy maybe yeah 
yeah, there, there were um, similar she's, stuff. So she's she's thinking about it um, yeah. and how to how to make it work. Um, yeah. Well, now we know that things work. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I used. Cat's um, guide to jam timing when I was asked to jam time the night before a game and I'd never jam time before so I was like studying like mad with her um, resources and they were amazing yeah. absolutely and amazing. this is always how the jam timing happens isn't it you just like mm -hmm. you go <laughs> I know your friends just like hey you know how you've done stuff a few times <laughs> and you have a relatively loud voice <laughs> yeah like I saw the notification on our little officials group like someone having a drop out and I knew I just knew <laughs> I, I am because you you do the whistle and then you step back and just watch yeah, yeah but see um <laughs> That's I forgot not to good. do the whistle at one point I just put my hand down and then wondered why the skates weren't moving <laughs> The, so Candy the, was just yeah. laughing at me. <laughs> like the, the, the my, my best thing. experience was uh, when Sam made me uh, be a referee for the short track at Iraq last year, and I was you like, "You enjoyed that? <laughs> that was great." <laughs> pack. What is the pack? Points. Mm -hmm. What are the points? One point. Yeah, fine. <laughs> I mean, it was, was it great was, fun. I think I think you enjoyed it more than I think you were worrying about it more than it actually turned out to be worth worrying about in the end. <laughs> no, it was good fun. It's great experience. I mean, Being I the just, only ref. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you only need two at most anyway. So uh, for short track, so you were only half. You were only half of a half a ref. Um, but no, I think it's. I think it's been good that we'd be able to do things like that as well. I mean, talking about. I mean, Scottish internationalism, we've also had lots of people, for example, Iraq. So for people who aren't European, Iraq is the European World Derby Organizational Conference. Uh, it's hosted by uh, Berlin's Bear City every year for the past 10 years now. Um, and there's very frequently been a, at least one Scottish speaker um, at Iraq. So we're, we've been very good at um, outreach because um, I know Crazy Legs talked about ARD's rebrand um at the 2019 one for example mm -hmm. and obviously then we had you over um to speak about things um in the 2021 so but we also had i also kind of want to say mention about i mean we've been talking about how obviously in a sense you kind of expect glasgow and Old, and old Ricky to be the national things, right? Because you are two of the oldest leagues and you play high level games. But it's also been quite nice to have uh, things like, for example, uh, Newtown have done, uh, have had people involved in international things before, and Inverness have as well, um, involved in national level things. So I think it's also good that we've had leagues in general happy to inter interact with the wider community. Um, I think that's a really good thing about roller derby and not just specifically, I don't think, but um, it doesn't really matter how long you've been involved in something or, you know, how, how long you've been involved in the sport, how, what high or, you know, what level you've played at, whether you've played the sport or officiated it or been involved as a fan, but you have you have a voice as well, which is, it, it's, I think that's pretty nice. Um, and it's, people are respected as long as they're putting in the work, I guess. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's a DIY sport. We all support each other. And I think it's worth remembering that, you know, it's the, the sport that involves community and you can be a league member without uh, the necessity of being a skater or an official or being involved in the you know sport part of things if you don't if you want to you know help somehow you will be welcome and and there's so much stuff to do some other things that and and you still feel part of it it's not like you know there's not much of the well you need to skate to be the league you know mm -hmm. i think that's the important stuff about roller derby isn't it yeah also, I mean, everyone has external skills that are useful. I mean, so Puds, have you ever been, have you been made to use your accountancy skills for managing accounts <laughs> at DCB? 
Uh, no, I generally try and keep away from that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's always a danger, isn't it? Being drawn but into I, doing... no, I definitely have, other, like, it gives me other sort of, um, oh, I can't think of the right word. Other, there's other skills involved in my day job that lend themselves to being able to run a league mm-hmm. and speak to other leagues and organise all that kind of stuff. Love a to-do list. <laughs> and it's really weird being in this um, like sort of lockdown thing where you're like oh we can get all that old roller derby admin done but you can't there's nothing all the stuff you're like oh we could do that you're like well there's no point because we can't you know you're like oh let's we really want to increase our members we can't get people in the door because they can't come you cut through the door <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, that's, yeah it's um a bit odd. It's, it's a bit it odd. is nice. Don't get me wrong. It's really nice not having the sort of derby admin constantly. Yeah. And I'm sure that our members are glad not to have me constantly posting something going, uh, can you maybe do this thing? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the worst part about being like part of the leadership of a league is feeling like you're constantly posting messages. Yeah. Just be like, yeah. Oh, um, gentle reminder or... Can someone send me this or? Um, I think it's, I'm um, not on the board at the moment, but I was, and there were days where I would have really proactive days, and they'd be like, "Oh no, I have four things that I need the league to do." So you having to try and like, okay, me again, sorry. Yeah. Uh, can everybody remember whatever? Yeah. A tip for um, people that are maybe newer to a sort of head of a league role: it's definitely worth separating yourself from the role like remembering you're maybe posting these things as the head of the league not you try and not make it like a personal thing if it maybe sounds if it's like a stern kind of remember we need to be doing this it's you it's the league yeah. that's doing it, not their pal that they're drinking with later I know. yeah it can be uh, hard to separate yourself from i don't know having a stern word about making sure your like training starts at half seven you should be ready at half seven or whatever it is you're wanting to yeah yeah i think it's um Facebook, though, because sometimes you like i don't know i'm terrible for like i can have a conversation with somebody online and then see them later on that day and kind of forget that <laughs> been chatting about something or i don't know i'm just not good at remembering these things no. It's the same with coaching. Um, you know, we, I think in all of our leagues, we are skaters and coaches in the same time because we don't have external coaches as far as I know. And it's really difficult when you coach people that you play on a team with. That, you know, you get what uh, Tats is saying. You need to kind of step away from being the teammate sometimes and like be a coach at this point. And, and that's that's the difficulty as well that we, I think, come across all of us when we play in Girl Derby and coaching Girl Derby at the same time. I think that's right. And, and then switching the coach off when you're on track with them again. Yeah. Both times. I, I actually find that really difficult with I, I stopped helping out even at all refereeing for a couple of years because I find that transition really difficult going from refereeing to being a skater on track and trying to manage not being yappy <laughs> so <laughs> yeah I had to kind of step away from refing just to because it is, it's, it's, it, it's a compartmentalizing thing, Puds, you're right, and, and that's really good advice, I think, um, for just uh, having, I've never been a director. <laughs> um, I've always managed to avoid that side of it, but I've been in most of the other roles um, in, in the club over, over my years. But uh, yeah, I think it is, you have to be one person at one stage and then, um, and then you're the skater or whatever else you are um, at, at the appropriate times. Good learning. Have, have you ever been the WCJ rep for GRD? Me? No. Because I think it always feels like another thing that's a tension because you're a conduit between a larger entity and the league. Right? So it's another yeah, thing. I think I that's always been managed really well by our, mm. um, with the reps. 
are just really good at posting the forum. This is what's happening at the moment. Let me know if anyone has any thoughts. And then the, so they, they are very good conduits and don't try and taint it with their opinions or anything like that until you know it's time for people to have their say or anything as well. But yeah, I can imagine that could be could be difficult at times as well. Because I know, I think Puds, are you the MIDA rep for UCB, or is there another rep? Um, yeah, well, we've got three. So I'm, I'm what's known as the voting rep. So each league, each league has three. So two, two league reps and one voting rep, and uh, the league reps do a similar job um, of us just sort of feeding things back and forth. So it's weird because it's obviously all quite quiet at the moment. Mm. Um, so there's not so much going. I guess the main thing is the discussion of like um, the end of season, which doesn't exist anymore. Uh, tournaments and you know what's going to happen with them. You know, pe are people still going to attend them if they happen and various things. So that's the big sort of topic for discussion at the moment. When are they, are, are they around at the same time as the WIFTA end of season tournaments, Buds? Sorry. Um, yeah, so qualifiers is around end of July, start of August yeah. kind of okay. time. Um, and then champs is October. Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. there's the kind of thought that champs should be fine, but... But if, if there's you, nobody qualifying. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, we're like, well, qualifiers should be fine because it's August, but if you've not been able to train before it, then is it even safe to do it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, totally. And you will get, uh, a, you know, I don't know what the turnover of skaters is like for you all as well, but that, I would imagine by that stage, there might be some people who had planned to not be skating anymore by that stage, had planned to be doing other things, had, you know, were moving away or you know ch changing around as, as well so um having that you know with our, our like nothing happening here as far as i'm aware but it might be that the last team practice we all had together might not look the same as the next team practice we we all have together as well um for a variety of different reasons um so yeah i guess there'll need to be Everything will need to be looked at again, I suppose, huh? Yeah, I think that's the biggest fear is uh, that there might be some people that just kind of have gotten used to not going to the roller derby and going, actually, this is fine. I think we'll get the, the complete opposite as well. So we'll get the people that maybe not took it for granted, but sort of saw it as a bit of a, oh, that's what I do. That'll it be was an really option before. No, it's a necessity. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, a lot I, of think, people, yeah, yeah. I think so. I was going to say, a lot of people are going to be missing that contact with people. So, so much so. Yeah. So, so much so. I think it's, it's, it, there's a, a massive thing, especially with team sports, that we, we all rely on each other in, in so many ways, um, not just to progress as a team together, but um, we're family. And it's, yeah. It's, it's a huge thing that we're all missing. We have a, a number of sessions a week, which some or all people turn up to depending on who's available or feels up to it. And the thing we miss most, at, you know, at the end of it is just seeing everybody's faces. And it's, it's such, a, such a lovely thing to, thank goodness for the internet, huh? That we could get mm -hmm. to still see yeah. each other and, and have a laugh. And, and because, you know, there's, everything can be written down, but we all know that the nuances of text doesn't always work. So actually seeing somebody's face and their expressions and, and things like that is so good. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a weird one when we're all back getting, learning how to be close to each other. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to hug everybody. I'm going to be in everyone's personal space. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm going to be like, you can't do that. <laughs> I'm going to the game because, like, I am so super aware of where everyone is around me when I'm walking the streets. Like, throwing that into a pack scenario. 
there are rules. Why are people not going with the rules? <laughs> but I saw a really good t-shirt actually on the Instagram the other day, which was that you call it social distancing, we call it bridging. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want that. That's good. Yeah. I did. I also saw, um, I think it was this uh, referee in America posted a thing that she'd been asked effectively to use her refereeing skills to enforce social distancing because she's very good at measuring distance and call it, and of course it's used to call <laughs> this it. Is, this is so, totally what I have when I go out. I was like, oh no, you're too close. This is, this is not the distance you have. No. Just because you work in this like go into ref mode, this is watching people. Yeah, not good. <laughs> But I had it once with bus tracker before when I looked at bus tracker in Edinburgh and I was like, oh, the numbers are not as they should be. And then I realized <laughs> that I was thinking the, you know, roller derby, right? Yeah. Numbers like one, <laughs> one, seven, blah, 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 instead of just like one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. So that happened. Um, yeah. I like it. <laughs> so do we have plans for what we are going to do when we come out of uh, out of things. I mean, I mean, obviously, right. you're partly at the whims of WCDA scheduling for uh, for GAD and ARD, but also, I mean, there is no British champs. We know that, so um, there would at least be some free time. So, does anyone have any thoughts? I think the trouble at the moment is actually again with venues you know like we're trying to reschedule stuff for later in the year and I've sent out a whole lot of emails asking for availability and there's nobody at the end of the emails you know so I think you know we we don't know at what point that our training venues are going to reopen never mind having booking for events and stuff like that as well or traveling and stuff you know I was um yeah there's yeah, I don't know. What's everyone else doing? I will say before everyone else says that part of your problem is that your your venue is of course a university venue for for public bands and of course. And yeah. all the Scottish universities are basically closing everything until the new term. So Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lodian and us, we our game venue is a school. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, same with ICRD. We have another hall that we use um, mainly for our newer skaters. Um, it's literally just a little community centre hall mm -hmm. um, and they're still available. But obviously, we, we don't, we aren't using it at the moment. Um, but I think when we do go back, we're going to use that as maybe um, as a scaled back version of practice. Mm -hmm. Just to avoid any injuries and things and just like really go back to basics to get people building up stamina and things. Um, but we'll have to see. What have you guys still had a chance to skate at all in the past few weeks? Have you had your skates on? Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky in that um, we've got a local park that's five minutes away from my house that's a really good surface and the weather's been ace. What's your postcode there, Puds? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, that park's sort of hit and miss. Sometimes it's heaving. Right. And then sometimes everyone must be thinking, oh, it was heaving yesterday, so I won't go. And Yeah, it's the same around here. It's like taking my skates when I go out for a dog walk, and if it's quiet, chucking them on. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm the same. I've, I've kind of had them on a couple of times, and taking the dog out it's like I don't she's a lurcher so if she decides to run after mm. something and I'm holding on to her <laughs> that'll, that'll be a disaster uh so yeah not as much as I would like I mean I think for you oh. house, but... like some some of our people like we have um Porty Beach and uh Porty has quite nice uh skate alone um, but it can be really busy as well. And they're like cycle personal. They can be busy with people just like walking or whatever. So I did not skate outside. I sometimes skate. I've got like from my previous flood, like a square meter of um, floor panels together. So I can do some footwork and that's about it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've been doing a lot of cycling because I'm a cyclist kind of by the heart. So <laughs> I enjoy getting up early and just going for a massive ride. 
Yeah, just I think, switching off. I think, Pudge, you've been a lot of running, haven't you? Uh, yeah, but not as much as I like to do. Mm. Um, yeah, so I'm actually supposed to be running the London Marathon tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Um, Are you kind of relieved that you're not, or is that me protecting? <laughs> no, it's it because it's, it's so much like training and work and yeah. like, I mean, I could go and run it, run for four or five hours, but it just feels like against all of the sort of guidelines and stuff. Um, and it like does put your body through it, so it would weaken me for potentially catching anything. Mm. Uh. And it just wouldn't be the same without the big massive crowd. Oh, mm. so, I can't even imagine. Yeah, but it's it's weird because I don't. I'm not a massive fan of like little runs because again, the competitive part of me goes <laughs> you know, little runs. So yeah, <laughs> really quickly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I much prefer going run out for hours and hours and just sort of like there's nothing but what's around you. Um, and again, Aberdeen were really lucky for like being a small city that's got loads of countryside behind it so you can run all sorts of different places. Yeah. yeah. I'm the complete opposite. If I, I think like 5k for me is the ideal distance because I can just <laughs> go and do it really fast and then it's over. <laughs> I took uh, my daughter out on her bike last weekend and I was like, oh yeah, it's fine. And we ended up going for six miles and I was just miserable. I was just like, oh, this is horrible. <sighs> That would be also me. I've been running she most days. She's on her bike, so she's miles ahead in the distance. And I'm like, oh, that's that's great. Excellent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Five, five to six k. Over and done with in half an hour. Yeah. Done. Endorphins released. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually surprised we have so many people who like running in this. Thing oh no, I don't like running. You but just I run. get a, You just I do like it. Having run. <laughs> I find there's a lot less people that know sort of runner's etiquette, which is mm. you just give a little, little, little yeah. smile, like oh, I'm doing the thing that you're doing. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, and it's quite you know when you run past someone that doesn't do that, you're just like, oh. It's the same when you're cycling. It's that you have to we know acknowledge other cyclists in the same way. Yeah, yeah. I think well, you're driving in the country, country and you have your wee hand up, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's maybe just the roller derby community thing again. We're we're all lovely to each other. And I was just about to say the same, but <laughs> I I have taken obviously not now, but um, when running before all this happened, I was seeing how many people I could high five. How many other runners? <laughs> <laughs> obviously not now. Good. It, it, it's great, but some people don't realise that that's what you're doing because it is a bit odd until after yeah. the. It's awkward and it's weird, and then sometimes we miss each other. And oh, I, I, I always worry that they think I've taken my hand away last minute. <laughs> but it's a nice thing when it when it happens. It's like a power up. Oh, let's go! We're doing this. We're right here. It sucks, but it'll be over soon. <laughs> Unless your pods and running marathon. <laughs> I think you were planning on still trying to run a total distance that was marathon-ish, weren't you, Puds? Uh, yeah, I a, planned yeah. to do that um, last weekend. was supposed to be like a sort of fake London marathon thing. But yeah, again, that just wasn't possible. Ugh, it'll happen. It's all, it's all fine. Everything's been moved to October. Mm-hmm. So we're not lost out on anything. It's just instead of running through the nice sort of... Uh, winter spring weather I'll be running in the summer which is oh. yeah. going to be a joy <laughs> um, Are you running for any charity pods or is it just a um, Yeah, no I'm running for uh, Alzheimer's Scotland Oh that's great yeah. So that um, that's good but it's that's another sort of pressure on it is it the, fun, is the fundraising thing or I'm like oh that would all be done now but that's another thing Sim- yeah. and it's similar to the roller derby thing it's the same people that you're sort of tapping up yeah yeah well send us a link we'll share it oh thank you maybe we'll all follow you down in october and just cheer on at the sidelines <laughs> that would be great when we can <laughs> see each other and touch each other and hug yeah, and yeah. yeah. And, and at the end there'll be someone emka will be there with a whistle and we'll <laughs> do the three lots of four it'll be great i will actually 
double my time to take because I'll high five every <laughs> single day. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 terms. <laughs> I, I was thinking we could we could obviously do one of the um, one of the overhead tunnels, um, which is so popular mm. in London. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Along the whole marathon. <laughs> bridge, yeah. <laughs> I lived next to London Marathon when I came to UK first time and I, I didn't know it was happening. I went out and there was a big marathon happening. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of free water afterwards. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. But yeah, it's busy. <laughs> and it's I think the atmosphere is amazing. So yeah, I would totally go to cheer on parts. <laughs> yeah. I'll be there virtually. <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook. I'll start. I'll start a, a support thread on my Facebook page. <laughs> Yay. Really great. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I was thinking. I was just thinking about things being big, and, and I mean, it's also a disappointment that the um, Edinburgh Festival has been cancelled because, of course, Bard mm -hmm. used to host. Yeah. In the festival things, uh, I mean, I know that MK isn't isn't a, isn't unhappy that the Edinburgh festival is cancelled because it ruins the life of everyone who lives in Edinburgh. But um, it's been yes. a problem since we lost Meadowbank because um, yeah. you know when we had Meadowbank was our venue um, that was very close to the city, to like links like twenty minutes on the bus or walk from the um, from like the main uh, attractions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, but now, because we, uh, yeah, that was demolished and it's been rebuilt, so we play outside of Edinburgh, so the festival game was not that successful because it's so difficult to get to the venue mm. that we play the games in, so that, that was something that we kind of lost before that anyway. I mean, did you have, do you have plans to try and reconstitute at some point? I know there were huge venue issues in Edinburgh currently, but... In the city? Not... There's yeah. nothing where you can find. There isn't anything. Uh, I mean, because obviously Meadowbank was fantastic, but yes. I mean, they are building the new Meadowbank Sports Center, mm. but um, when it's going to be finished and how it's going to look like, and will it be accessible with um, the local authority we have? Are we worried mm. you'll ruin their floor? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, you know. Maybe we all play badminton by then. Have <laughs> 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 Wasn't it, wasn't it, I think in America, the current thing that's damaging the old derby is pickleball or something, I think, isn't it? Everyone's, in America, there's, there's a, apparently there's a sport called pickleball. And apparently it's the thing that now everyone books out halls for and no one can play the old derby because pickleball is booking all their halls. Uh, so. What is pickleball? I mean, yeah. It's some kind of sport involving a ball that is called pickleball. <laughs> yeah. Given this American sport, the board is probably not actually spherical, um, but you know. Maybe we can find some angel like you know the American one, and they will buy us a massive venue somewhere oh, yeah. in Scotland, mm. so mm. we can all use it. <laughs> we should we have some more um, venues not wanting us to put tape down, which is mm. just <laughs> so places are less <laughs> tape. But then if you want to your sports lines on your floor, like every other sports get get their lines, mm -hmm. right? We'll get there. Yeah. I mean, a surprising number of venues have also managed to conversely put lines down for for um, Derby. I mean, the Ark did, I think. Um, mm. or you, or well, we, we taped it and they let us keep it. Oh, yeah, I know. But they did sort of make it more permanent. Um, yeah. No, no, that was great. And um, our one of our Glasgow club um, school halls let us keep tape down. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it would be great to have it properly painted down. Yeah. We had one training venue that was taken over basketball, um, but they actually painted the track for us without checking the guidance. Uh -huh. So the track was not offset, so we had to always <laughs> tape like offset anyway. <laughs> but then basketball won, so we didn't use it anymore. Mm. It used to be a problem in back when people used to book uh, Sterling's uh, Sports Centre, um, back when we had uh, three and a half leagues in, in the Sterling Falkirk area. Um, I mean, so um, they they used to be competing with um, basically curlers and that kind of thing. And that's one of the reasons they never don't use it anymore because curling is really big in, in, our, in our part of Scotland. So, uh, yes. Um, but Sorry. I think 
we've been talking a bit about, I mean, we've been talking for a while about stuff, but I guess uh, to close out, because we're coming up to what? Uh, almost two hours. Uh, I should, um, <laughs> yes. Uh, so I guess I ask everyone for, for what was your, what's your, for their highlight of whether they'll be in their career in, uh, put you on the spot. Who wants to go first? Okay, Pods has, Pods has said something, so Pods, you can go first. Come on, what's your, what's your highlight um, of, if you're going to say to people, well, they'll be in Scotland is great because of this thing that happened to me. I, it's just, oh, I can't, I won't swear, but my, obviously, scoring <laughs> points against the USA, okay, move on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Play, playing for my country is, that, it, yeah, and having the Scottish community behind you is always a treat. And it, it is a shame that MRDWC won't be happening uh, this year, anyway. Although it will be happening next year, so... Yes. Hopefully that all works out dates-wise and stuff. Yeah. Anyone Do else? I really have a highlight as such, but I think just discovering that it, <laughs> Roller Derby exists. And uh, we run our new skaters in Musselburgh, and I stay like the next town along and just discovering that this thing was going on so close to where I lived and I had no idea. Uh, yeah, it's just been amazing. I think for me it would be um, being asked to be a head and a soul for a game, um, just because it showed that there is always room for progression and space for people to grow within the Scottish Derby community, even if they don't feel like they're a part of like a big NSO group of people because there's only two of us in Inverness so um, yeah that was really nice and to feel like what you'd done had been recognised by by your friends in the community. Uh, I, uh, this is hard. <laughs> um, you know I'm gonna be a bit cheesy and say the last couple of years of building a squad and not me building it I'm just part of it um and our league right now is in a super good place and it's you know everybody's leagues have had ups and downs um and I think we're it's it, our yeah I think w what we're doing and, and the rate that we're just gradually working um things through the team and stuff like that right, right now is is really really nice and a very supportive way to do it um so yeah i think i'm just happy that i didn't end up retiring after all. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, yeah, the, uh, my personal highlight of yours sarah was at the d1 playoffs where after you did an ace jam and you just went yeah <laughs> <laughs> did that you know what that was can i tell you honestly what that was that was me going they moved them. I just kept skating. <laughs> <laughs> it was a no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks. <laughs> Amka, you got to finish it up. <laughs> I'm just really happy that uh, I joined uh, Ogreki just out of absolutely kind of nowhere. Um, and I've been part of this uh, league and helped to build hopefully i have to build it to the point where we are just now by doing different stuff and like meeting loads of people in the community as well uh around scotland because i made the best friends not only in my league but also around the country as well yeah. and I also think... cheering at the world cup for like <laughs> in scotland when i was on the other team i was just like <laughs> hi friends <laughs> <laughs> what about yeah, you that... sam no, it's it's very hard because again, I think for the same reason that once you've been around in Derby for long enough, there's lots of highlights. Um, I was very proud of Team Scotland managing to get the position they deserved in the 2018 World World Cup. Um, I'm not going to cause controversy by suggesting why that is, why I'm emphasising position they deserved uh, this time around. But no, I was I was very uh, and also very proud of of Power Scotland as well doing increasingly better doing their their performance in the last men's world cup and also I was very proud of them. So they were they were high points. But I'm 
I guess individual high points every time a new le- a new league plays their first game is a high point. It's always great to see new leagues rehearsing. It was great Inverness playing their first game and so on. I think we're very fortunate as a nation to have you as part of our derby community because you are probably one of the biggest champions for Scottish roller derby and like everyone appreciates you in Scotland. Yeah, I'm a yeah, I'm a big champion of lots of roller derby. I mean, you know, um, roller, roller derby deserves. But you like it the best, Sam, right? <laughs> uh, uh, well, you know, I did. I did take four vodcasts to get around to Scotland. So you know, um, <laughs> but uh, yes, no. I mean, I'm I'm proud to be part of the community, and um, from twenty late twenty ten onwards, it's been a it's been a good thing. It's been a long one. I think I probably still have one of your very, very early YouTube videos. <laughs> well, if they're that early, you probably have it on DVD because I think the, the, the original, the original video was was distributed on DVDs because YouTube was not reliable at the time. Yeah, yeah, probably. Things have changed yeah. so much over the last um, decade. Yeah. Very much so. Thank goodness. <laughs> I, I'm grateful that the old. The early like Jakey footage still exists mm-hmm. to be able to show people like this is where it's where you don't start out at the level that you see mm-hmm. your coaches at. You know everyone starts not being able to play, and mm-hmm. it's it's years and years of work. Do you not think that they start at a higher level than we started at, though? Because I, I remember like one person, Sam, you'll remember Marla Mayhem. I do could, remember Marla. Could yeah. do derby stops, and we were all like, oh, yeah. so cool. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And now it's just normal for me to be able to do it. It's like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. You know, there's so, so many skills that you see, and it's like, okay, I, I if you can't see it, you can't do it where you can't be it I guess so um, there's that but yeah so people are starting at higher levels without even knowing it as well Mm. so which is really nice I think it's I think it is nice to see that Scottish Derby is continuing and people are getting better and you know everything is growing so So I think on that high note, I will let everyone, I will draw this um, podcast to a close because the problem with these podcasts is that it's stopping, um, I found. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I think I think we have been speaking for two hours and people listening to this podcast also need a chance to go and do other things. So um, thanks everyone for coming. I'll let you all say, wave goodbye to the audience and... Um, this has been an insight into the Scottish Derby community. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you, Thank you, Sam. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Bye. Bye, friends. Bye. <laughs> See you guys soon, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs>